What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic and today we're looking at more of your best builds. It's been a little bit since I did best builds. I actually like had it open on my Discord for a month and then I sort of forgot about it and uh, here we are. But yeah, we're looking at the VT5536 by Trekker Get. I had to look up what this is. I'm 99% sure it's a poop sprayer for farms. Uh, but it looked really, really cool and it looked like it had a lot of detail. And it had crab steering, so I just, I really wanted to check it out. So anyway, we're gonna hop in the cab. This is ridiculous. People need to stop being so good at glitch welding. I mean, the, the Z fighting or whatever it is, you know, where they flicker, that's kind of a little bit annoying. But look at all the detail you can get in such a small space by doing that, like all those lights and stuff. Anyway, number one is some lights, number two is more lights, number three is... I don't, I don't know what number three is. People tell me to, you know, read the description. Oh, it's blinkers. Oh, that's cool. Three is blinker left, four is blinker right. Five is the top hazard lights. Okay. I like the fact that it accelerates slowly. It's kind of cool. It feels very, like, lumbering. That's actually really neat. It's just probably, like, a low-powered gas engine. I'm a big fan of this. All right, uh, six is apparently crab to the left. Well, that's cool. It crabs to the left, but I can still steer on top of it. Look at that. That's so neat. And then uh, seven is crab right. Yeah, so we can just kind of crab walk. I don't know why these sort of fertilizer sprayers would need a crab walk on fields. I really, I'm not an expert in farming equipment. Eight is deploy the arm. Nine is deploy the poop sprayers. And zero would be us spraying the poop. Oh, that's cool when you crab walk. See, it straightens the fertilizer sprayer out. I don't understand the point of crab- I would have thought you'd want to go straight so you have less tire tracks, right? Like, if you crab walk, you're putting down, you know, four tire tracks, right? Like, see, all four tires are offset. But if I was going straight, you know, all four tires would be in a line. I don't know, maybe somebody who knows a little bit more about farm equipment would be able to help me out there. But this is just a ridiculously good build. I actually live pretty close to a bunch of farms. And uh, yeah, when it's poop spraying season, you can smell it for miles. It's, oh my God, the cab is on individual suspension. Oh, that's so cool. And the pistons to kind of keep that looking like it's, uh, oops, I need to actually like steer and drive. That's actually really, really cool. Wicked cool build, 10 out of 10, super excited. Let's check out more stuff. All right, next thing I want to check out is this uh, Stalinets S60 by Kiro. I have no idea what this is. It looks like a tank. It's got some kind of engine. I, it's not a piston-powered engine, but it looks like a tank. The glitch welding on this looks insane. So, I don't know. But, like, I can see there's a caution block we clearly have to remove. And this looks great. There's no description for this. So, we're going to remove that caution block, I'm assuming. And we remove this one. Okay. And then, I think we can just drive it. This is ridiculously cool. I know there was a mod that added tank tracks to Scrap Mechanic a while ago, but it, the, basically the tank track was just like a whole tread piece that you just slap on something and it's like just a giant wheel. And that's pretty cool, but I mean, old school tank tracks are wicked. How does this even... It, it, so there's no tensioner. There's nothing to tension the track. It's literally just a track and the wheel just kind of drives on it. It doesn't. It doesn't really need to be a tank track, I guess. It doesn't have full tank steering either, I don't think. Can I go backwards? I can. But when I go left, it only rotates the right tread forward. And when I go right, it only... This is still wicked cool. I love the steampunk look of this with the fake engine. That's so neat. And the blower fan that turns on. It has... It has pretty minimal traction, I'm not gonna lie. It's a pretty... It's a pretty weak tank. Still a really, really cool build. I, I don't think tank tracks are ever gonna be... A super great thing in scrap mechanic you can see oh my god this is awesome great now see now it's it's just a little yeah see when we turn it it only that's still cool though pretty neat stuff but unfortunately uh yeah it doesn't it doesn't have the traction to get over i just saw it i thought it looked super cool and uh it, this is this is awesome of course it wouldn't be a typical con best builds if we didn't have 650 million piston creations i actually left the best builds up for way too long on the discord next time i'm going to activate it and deactivate it right away but this is my uh blue flame this is a piston powered trophy truck apparently this has like working suspension and, and lots of lag but it's got working suspension it's got the working gear system going on it's got a drive shaft it's it's got a clutch apparently and it's already it's already fired up I mean, it's a little laggy, but the suspension just doesn't care. It's kind of cool. Unfortunately, this is the part about Scrap Mechanic that's just terrible, is the uh, the lack of physics. 
when you uh, when you try and spawn in really complicated creations with gearboxes and stuff. I noticed this one also has a tendency to pull slightly to the right. Less so than mine. But not bad. But yeah, the, uh, the complicated suspension on the back with all the extra linkages, plus then you've got the piston engine to the drive shaft with all the gears and the front wishbone suspension. I mean, it just, it just turns your computer into a toaster. I really hope, more than anything else, like, whatever content they add in Chapter 2 with Survival, that's gonna be great. The new, new content, new parts, whatever, that's fantastic. New enemies. But I really hope they do a little bit to fix the physics optimization on complicated creations because, uh, it, it's, you know, they added the physics slider, but that just makes things go super jank, and it's just, it's really cool to build super complicated stuff. Oh my god, the torque on this thing is kind of insane. But yeah, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that whenever you try and build something super complicated, like functional cars and things, you just end up with a lot of lag. Like, my computer is right now the number one cause of global warming. So anyway, let's take out some trains, because, you know, you know I like trains. And this is the QR Bayer Garrett Class Locomotive 7U by Joe Train Gamer. Uh, it's apparently piston-powered, of course, and uh, it's made for 7U track. Works best on physics level 7. I think I have 7U track. If I don't, I'm screwed. The, I also have another train that says 5U, which I don't think we can spawn. I'm pretty sure 7U means like 7 blocks between the tracks, which is what, what I'm at. So let's set the physics to level 7 first. Simple 7, there we go. And then let's, there, that looks, that's much better. This is so cool. It's got a full valve gear set up with an actual, oh my god. It's got like a slider between two plates. That's actually incredibly creative. How the heck did you even get that to fit there? That's so good. It's like... Okay, this is just ridiculous. So it's actually piston powered from here. These are your drive pistons. There's a sensor based on the valve gear. As the valve gear moves forward and triggers that sensor, I'm assuming it pushes the pistons. This looks... This looks insane. I have no idea what kind of locomotive this is. And wait, what? This, is this a real thing? Someone who knows trains, Heist is going to be so bad at me for not knowing this, but this is, if this is a real locomotive, you have a boiler in the middle, you have a set of drive at the front with, like, I don't even know what the heck this is above it. It's not a boiler. It's just, like, an extra water tank, maybe, probably. And then you've got another drive in the back. If this is a real train, this thing is nuts. It would be what? Um, are those supposed to be wheels? So it would be a 4, 8, 2... A 48484? Is that what this is supposed to be? I I'm I don't even know. Alright, I'm gonna get in this thing and drive it. This thing looks ridiculous. I really hope this is a real engine. This seems like one of those just insane things that some train guy was like, we need more power. Let's just put two, you know, 484s back to back or 482s back to back and call it a day. Alright, one moves us this way. This is awesome. Okay, well this is uh like yeah, it's, it's a tender in the front, a tender in the back. I, I mean, I could never... This is insane. Like, I, I'll never build something this this insane in my life. This is ridiculous. The amount of... The amount of... Oh, I'm... Oh, oh, there's thrusters. There's thrusters to get it going if I need to. It's, it's running away now. This is so good. Like, I can't believe it. It actually works on the pistons, too. Hi, can I... I need to get back on my train, please. All right, just gotta just gotta get back on here. There we go. Perfect. No big deal. This is ridiculously cool. The detail too, with like the embers for the firebox and stuff, and all the valves and stuff inside. And oh, this is insane. Okay, so anyway, that was that was one, two. I'm assuming goes in reverse. Yeah. No, we're gonna go back forward. There we go. That's so cool. If I hit two, does it move? It actually moves the timing. Look at that. You see that? That little the little. The little valve gear sliding up and down. Man, I gotta, I gotta really work on making some valve gear in Scrap Mechanic. It's, that's so cool. It's so cool to have working valve gear. I did it once with the wall shirts and, and, and then that was it. Alright. Oh, three is a thruster. Okay, that's that thruster if you need to get going. Push it through a stall point, I guess. What's four? Four's lights. Five is my wonderful multi-chime whistle. And six is... I don't know what six is. Oh, six makes more smoke. It just chuffs normally. And if I hold six, it really streams 
That's so cool. This is this is insane. Unbelievably cool build. Beautifully done. Like, holy cow, the amount of time this would have taken. All right, next I want to look at this piston-powered hot rod with a Titan V8 engine, apparently. You know, you guys are naming your engines by V-Guard Epic. Apparently, this engine puts out 300 RPM. Listen, I've made a 300 RPM engine, too. I've also made a 460 RPM engine. Uh, it puts it at 190 horsepower, though, with a top speed of 85 kilometers an hour. So that's interesting. It's faster than any car I've done. Oh, I'm on jank physics. That explains a lot. I gotta not be on jank fit. There we go. Okay. Okay, what does this thing do if I... Does it have... What does one do? You guys put switches in... I, I don't even... Maybe it's reverse? Let's hold W. Oh my god! Um... Like, I... Sure, it can get to 85 kilometers an hour. Can it... Can it stay on the ground? Yeah, holy cow! This is a V8? What? Look at the torque on this thing! <laughs> the whole body's just rolling! Oh my god, you need... Okay, first of all, we need stiffer suspension. It's using a piston to set up a suspension. That's kind of cool. Yeah, you need... You need some stiffer suspension there, bud. Number one. Number two, like... I can't believe this engine has this kind of torque. It's ridiculous. It's a V8. Okay, I need to make a better V8, apparently. That's, that's insane. It puts out 300 RPM, but it's actually got so much torque. Look at this. It's ridiculous. I can't turn left. I'm, I over torque. Yeah, no, come on. Okay, okay. We gotta, we gotta calm down on the, on the left turning. Another thing too, I want to look at real quick. This thing does something really cool with the back axle. And I feel like I should do that as well. I wanna, I'm gonna flip this over real quick and take a look at it, because I wanna... The back axle, look at this. It's a 90 degree axle, like we're, we're transferring our power 90 degree. This uses that double bearing clutch setup, that's what this... I gotta learn how to build this too. This is a, this is that clutch setup where I, when you like, I guess, power the motor, it transfers power through, otherwise it doesn't, and it's two bearings in the same spot. I, someone showed me how to build this, actually Blue Flame did, so I'll have to try that out. Anyway, look at this. This is a 90 degree axle, right? But it's not in any way using a gear. I don't I don't really understand how that works. There's no gear involved there. Right. It's just it's just some voodoo magic. But yeah, there's no gear here, but yeah, we're transmitting power 90 degrees through this member. So that thing rotates at like a 45 degree angle and it transmits power. Look at look at that. See? It transmits power that's actually, like, I need to make more of those kind of mechanisms, too. Like, that's ridiculous. It's like a, a you know, it's like a, a one of those electric mixers. I, I have no idea how that, but yeah, you can see the middle arm ends up being at, like, a 45 degree angle, and somehow it always translates front and back. That's cool. And if I hold one, what does one do? Anything? No? One's just, like, a break? I don't, I don't understand what that is. And now if I hold S, does the clutch go in reverse? Yeah, it does. This thing's super cool. Well, wicked cool build. Makes me realize I still have a lot to learn about piston engines. Oh, 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 I'm holding a W and it's going backwards. Gotta let it stall out first. This engine timing is messed up. All right, next I wanted to check out this Osprey with thrusters. No mod by D1 Ant only. Apparently, it's an Osprey with, with thrusters. This looks super cool. I really hope this works. We got lots of seats in here for you and your four friends. All right, one is rotate left, two is rotate right, three is something. I probably should read the controls. Let's let's do a quick uh, let's do a quick read of the controls here. Three is thrusters on off, four rotate, five rotate, increase thruster. Th oh, there's the throttle settings, doors and landing gear. All right, all right. There's five different settings. No problem. I'm an expert. I've already been certified on this aircraft. Wonderful. We just got to hop in here. Close that. All right. So three is thrusters on. Four. Five, that's cool. Six. Setting one. Setting two. Setting three. Oh, we're up. Okay. That's cool. Eight. Is eight the door? Oh, yeah. Nine. Nine is the landing gear. There we go. I mean, this flies pretty good. I have a feeling it's got a suspension. Oh, three turns them off. That's not what I want. Five. No, there we go. It flies pretty good. I feel like it's got a suspension glitch somewhere. Man, those thrusters are stable, though. 
Yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely gotta be a suspension glitch keeping this thing stable. I've tried so many times to make an Osprey with the wings mod and without using a suspension glitch, and every time I try and do it, it ends up failing really, really horribly. And the reason why is it's really hard for to like control the torque. I'm sure there's one that exists on the workshop, and I'm sure someone's gonna be like, yo, you need to just check out this one. Okay, how do I spin? Oh, two and one, right, that's right. But yeah, I'm sure someone's got one on the workshop and is like, yeah, here's one that I made that's, you know, suspension or um, uh, wing powered. But this is wicked cool. This is super stable. If you could build this in survival, it would be a wicked flyer, except we'd already be out of fuel. I'm pretty sure they glitch welded four thrusters inside a barrel too. Oh, and they glitch welded the cement things on top. That's sick. That looks really, really good. Really cool build. Super easy to control. Thrust off, landing gear on. 10 out of 10. I'm stuck. 9 out of 10. Alright, of course, we've got another train. The Piston Powered Flying Scotsman with no mods. Uh, you guys and your glitch welding, though. Like, unbelievable. It, you know, it's... You guys make such cool-looking stuff. And this one looks like it also has a whole functional valve gear setup again. Uh, by Rippin' already won. And, again, works best on Physics 7. Apparently, I should start playing around with physics 7 when building trains. I don't know why physics 7 is considered the magical number, but apparently it doesn't affect the piston-powered stuff, which is interesting. I would have thought it would have caused the piston stuff to explode. I It probably ruins suspension, but I guess with pistons it doesn't. Um, this looks like it's the right gauge. Okay, perfect. Hop in here. Facing just to the side. So, 1. 1 does what? I don't, I don't see what 1's doing. Oh, we're just moving automatically? I think one pushes... It looks like it pushes my bar down to make me move forward. Two probably pushes my bar up. Yeah, you can see on the valve gear there. That's so cool. Pushes it above. This looks like... I don't know what kind of valve gear. Almost like a wall shirt. A two? Yeah, no. It's kind of... It's struggling. It wants to go backwards. It's in a dead spot. You know, there's one thing... That I don't think any piston powered people do in scrap mechanic. I can't tell if this one's got it. It's kind of impossible to do, I guess, because of slip and stuff. But normally, if we look at the way trains are attached in real life, oh maybe these ones are set up. Oh, they are 90 offset. Yeah, see they're they're 90. The pistons are supposed to rotate to be 90 offset, right? So that way you always get a power stroke. And no matter what, you're like, you know, you're reducing the space. If your pistons were perfectly in line, like 180 degrees, like they were both always firing at the same time, you'd have a really strong chuff and then nothing. And you always want them 90 offset, so you get chuff, 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 chuff. And according to Heist, they're attached through the axle. And it looks like this has the same thing. Also, it's got like an actual timing system set up in the middle. That's really cool. But yeah, you can see there's a bearing there through the shaft, and I'm pretty sure that's what offsets the wheels 90 degrees. All right, we should probably go forward. This thing's wicked cool, though. Three, um... Oh, it's a thruster to start it up, to boost it if you need it. Yeah, okay. That's nice. Four is a thruster to boost it in the other direction. Okay. And five is... Five is the very dinky whistle. This is cool, though. It's, hey, you guys and your... This is insane. I gotta make some piston-powered trains. Th these valve gear mechanisms are nuts. Apparently, that's the piece I've been missing is that three or four by one piece with the three little bolts sticking out of it. That's apparently the magic sauce. When you put two of those pieces together, you get like the perfect valve gear setup. But yeah, this is this is really, really cool. Is it actually? Oh, it is taking it from underneath. Yeah, so it's taking... The timing comes from this red thing here. And that's what pushes forward to send both valve gear... It, it translates up to the top of that uh, that little open crack thingy right there, I think. And then the sensor at the front determines when the piston fires. That's simulating your valve gear going forward and backwards. This, this is ridiculously cool. You could do a whole episode on just all the various piston-powered trains people have built. And they're insane. They're so good. I mean, we're cruising, too. This thing's great. Awesome. Awesome. It's, it's so well done. So much detail. Not only the piston mechanism, but just all the other detail. I don't think there's any glitch welding to make the piston mechanism work. I think the only glitch welding is just to make the, uh, the decorations and make the aesthetics of it. But still, like, a ridiculously good build. Unbelievable.
All right, next I wanted to look at this amphibious pickup truck in vanilla by Murdo. And apparently it's got two modes, a high range 2x4 and a low range 4x4. It's got a lift, a boat mode, it's got weapons and a door. So I don't I don't really know what, what the deal is with this, if it's meant for survival or not. So one is 4x4 is four four mode. So this is high two apparently, where it's only rear wheel drive, I would assume. And then if I go, oh my god, what the heck is, what is going on on the wheels? Three is boat mode. Okay, is that a braking system? Two is like lift. Okay, I need to I need to read this again. What was? Two is lift. Yeah, switch your mode. Boat mode. It's it's got like brakes on the wheels. There's like bolts. Why are there bolts on the wheels? I don't I don't understand what that does. Oh, it locks. Oh, it's two bearings and it locks the bolt. That's so clever. So it locks half the rotation against the bearings. And then when it, oh my God, that's incredibly clever. All right, and then we just drive in the water. We press three and become a boat. Okay, this is kind of cool. I can't stop moving forward though, but I'm a boat now. It's actually really neat. It puts out like the stabilizer bars. Four brings out my guns, of course. Of course, and five is my doors. My one door. This is unbelievably cool. That that two by four, four by four switching thing, that's what I, I really wanted to spot it just to see how that worked. All right, how do I get onto the land here? I just drive up. This is great. Yeah, that's so cool. There's just like a double bearing. And the second bearing, when you go into low 4x4 mode, uh, excuse me? Yeah, let's turn. A little bit of understeer there, normal scrap mechanic things. Yeah, this definitely looks like a, a wicked survival vehicle. Alright, check it out. So now we get to this hill, let me just go 4x4 mode. And I think now it locks the gas engine, and it's using a controller to drive us forward. That's so cool. That's so strong. Perfect. And then back into high two. Yeah, you can. I think I think it literally just locks the gas engine. That's what it's doing. We're gonna look at one more creation just because you guys sent me so many. 1987 Peterbilt 359 No Mods by Meth 567. It is of course a truck, and of course, just like you thought, it is definitely piston powered. Uh, this thing looks amazing. I yeah, it's it's got like a double. Okay, well that's cool. Got like a universal joint going on here. It's a nice looking truck. It drives. It drives really, really well. I feel like if we tried to hook something up to it, it would probably just explode the game in terms of uh, lag. This one's got a little bit of a pull to the left, a little bit of torque. It's got good speed, though. And and it actually seems to have suspension. Wait, how'd they do suspension? Is it just like pistons? I think it's just... Oh, no, there's suspension there at the back. Holy cow. So that universal... Oh, the whole back four set of wheels is all in one set of suspension. Oh, well, that's cool. And then you just have one universal there in the middle. That's neat. And then the front wheels are just independent. Yeah, there's independent suspension. This is sick. You guys make such creative piston builds. It's insane. Like, I really need to up my piston build game. I got some cool engines. I don't know if I have anything that performs as well as, like, these big V8s people are making. What is it? This is a V4? A 6? It's a 4. It's literally just a 4. It's a 4-cylinder, and it has just as much power as anything I've built, it seems. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Of course, I'm going to open up the Best Builds channel again in my Discord, so check the description. And, uh, you know, if you want to submit your best builds, definitely do that. Upload them to the Scrap Mechanic Workshop. Include the list of all the mods that you use in the build. And uh, hopefully I'll feature it in a video. I got to do more best builds. You guys make such cool stuff. And you guys submit such cool stuff all the time. And I'm just, I'm just always so far behind on getting through the best builds. And uh, I'm stuck. I'm, I'm now stuck. Yeah, we're just gonna... There we go. We're gonna... Oh! Oh! It's a self-riding truck. Well, that's kind of interesting. Can I get back in? But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and make sure you uh, join the Discord and send me your best builds. I mean, you guys make some creative stuff. I'll... Like, I don't think I'm ever gonna get to the level of glitch welding that you guys are at. Although, I don't think this... Oh, there's a little bit of glitch welding there. You can see the ramp. It's kind of Z-fighting, and the, the windows are a little bit too. But yeah, you guys make some insane stuff. 
and uh, the creativity is just through the roof, and I always love showcasing it. Especially, like, the piston stuff is really cool for me, because I'll get a lot of ideas and inspiration from looking at how you guys have really, you know, created these insane mechanisms. I mean, you guys have some piston setups that are just absolutely ridiculous, and it always seems weird to me that you can do better stuff in the same game, but, I mean, it makes sense. It's just all about how you lay out the slightest differences in blocks can make, you know, all the difference in performance. So I, definitely a lot of things I still need to learn, and I'm really excited to always look at your builds and learn some stuff. So let me know what you guys think, and uh, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time. Oh, it is a V8. Look at that, that's so cool. Using that double bearing clutch again. It's so neat.